Just like in his debut 5,000 meters race on the international scene, his inaugural full marathon in Japan was equally full of drama. It was a world blind marathon in April 2004. The guy who took me to Japan, he said he can be able to finish the full marathon. But after 12 kilometers, he said, I cannot be able to go on. And you can imagine 30 more kilometers. And, uh, the, but luckily enough, we were in, in the front. Uh, and then the, head, the guys who were with the bikes who were giving us the direction, who were in front of us, who were like, uh, get, get, even get, getting uh, us water on the way. So they did organize very, very fast. But for the marathon, no problem. So they just organized for me to get another guide. After a few kilometers, he said, no, the, the, the pace is too high for me. So he, I had to get another one. So they knew that I, I, I'm so strong, they have to prepare more people on the way. And uh, they, then after that one, I got another one. I spent, I took eight guides for the 42 kilometers, eight guides. And it was, it was so bad for me. It was a very bad day for me. It was my first bad experience in the marathon because I took the wrong shoe. I missed water in all water stations because I, I thought that the way we do it for the 5K or 10K, it's the same like for the marathon. When Yoike had stamped his authority in the world of athletics, he was a visually impaired athlete on a roll. A year later, in 2005, he smashed two world records in one week. I was uh, registered for the uh, for the London Marathon by Stan Chart because of the campaign I'm doing the Star Chartered for the Sing is Believing. Then I was entered for another marathon in Hamburg, it, and it was the difference is one week. So it is this Saturday and the next Sunday. But I said to myself, I have to go and do both of them whatever will happen. Then in Nirada and Marathon, I did it so well. I was able to beat the world record. Then the next other in New Hamburg Marathon, I was able to beat that world record again in one week. So I was able to beat two world records in one week. He believes had it not been for his visual impairment, perhaps he would be among the world's greatest in athletics, breaking all the records. I think if I can be able to run on my own, I can be able to run very, very fast. You, if you can compare my timing in the, like in the 5K, my world record is only 15, 11, 11 seconds. And for the other uh, able-bodied uh, athletes, their time is just 12 minutes, so you can see it's different of three minutes. For the 10K, my best time is half an hour. But for the, the the rest is like 26, so you can see. And now this time I'm with the, with a guide. For the marathon is two and a half hours, which is still the world record. And you can see now the world record for the others is two two or two. Yeah, but the, so if I can be able to run on my own, you know when you are running with a guide, you you don't you have to drive with what the guide is telling you. Despite his successes, his big name. His world records, Henry Wanyoike has chosen to lead a simple and quiet life here in Gitaru, Kiambu County, using whatever money he earns to fund his projects, a life as simple as Mother Teresa's. <laughs> Through his Henry Wanyoike Foundation, he has built a school adjacent to the Shauriako slums where he grew up, a school that serves children from that slum. His biography that has been written in three major languages, English, Germany and Dutch, played a key role. I remember there is even one girl from Austria who read this book and she was so ill at the age of 23 and she had chronic disease and then after, before, before she died, she said the money which was in her account, has, she has given it to Henry Wanyuike to do whatever he want to do with the money. So uh, yes, the, uh, by that time I had already uh, have Henry Wanyuike Foundation in place and that money we, I, uh, I bought a piece of flood and I built the school which is called, it's under the name of uh, Teresia, Teresia House of Hope. 
The school has a high enrollment and currently supports at least 80 children. We, we normally have a run every year to support the pro some of our projects in this school. This is part of the school uh, students we support. We have it here. We have others in the secondary school, universities and colleges. So we normally partner with uh, different people to support some of these projects. He says his wife, Milo Wanyoike, is the greatest pillar in his life and for the family. I know it is God who chose me and I don't want to let God down. So in everything, Henry and Afanya, well, I just feel like supporting him more because if I fail him, that one may fail God. Together with Wanyuike's guide of 10 years, Paul Kihumba, they describe him in just few words. Henry ni mtu wa rajia mini sana, sana. And I like the way he is because si mtu wa kujurumia, as in si mtu ataka hapo, atagemi mtu. Henry doesn't give up. And then, ni mtu ambaye ananyanyakea. So, ata mkipatana na ye uwezi fikiria ni ure Henry ambaye unasikia ni champion. He's a down-to-earth guy. In 2013, he was nominated as a member of Kiambu County Assembly to represent people with disabilities. While in 2017, he contested the guitar award and emerged second among the 12 candidates. His is a story of resilience. I live like an, an ordinary person, like any other person nowadays. I don't see my brightness nowadays. I don't regret why it happened before. I used to worry why it happened, but nowadays I don't regret why it happened to me. I'm proud of myself now having achieved uh, being a world champion. I know it is not so easy to become a world champion, but I have able, I'm able to prove to the world disability is not an ability because I was given that opportunity, that chance. And uh, that is why I feel good when I compare the, the two lives. I've, I believe this uh, half of my life without sight, I can say I have done a lot and I, it is the best part of my life than the 21 years without, with, the, with the sight. Duncan Hemba for the Untold Story.